It has been more than 20 years now that we've presented the 3D morphable model of faces at SIGGRAPH 99. We would like to take this opportunity to summarize how it started and how 3D morphable models have developed since. But let me summarize the basic ideas first. Morphable models are a vector space representation of a class of objects. Each individual face is represented by a shape vector S and a texture vector T. In the original model, shape vectors were formed by the 3D coordinates of vertices and texture vectors by their RGB colors. We can form linear combinations to generate new objects and often a principal component analysis is calculated to find the main axes of variation. The critical feature is dense point-to-point -point correspondence between all individual faces. So in the shape and texture vectors, each component describes the position and color of the same point in all faces, for example, the tip of the nose. To establish this correspondence is the main challenge when building a morphable model. We can use the morphable model to create new instances of faces, but we can also learn about the possible shapes of faces, manipulate specific attributes such as gender, animate faces in an example-based framework, reconstruct faces from single or multiple images, and do face recognition. 3D reconstruction from a single image is an ill-posed problem, but the morphable model restricts the solutions to morphologically plausible faces. The idea of analysis by synthesis is to reproduce an image that is as similar as possible to the input. Each linear combination of faces can be rendered using rendering parameters such as pose and illumination. We minimize the difference between the synthetic image and the input image using an iterative optimization. Other more recent approaches use direct estimations of model parameters from the image. Before we discuss these newer developments, let's go back in time to the late 1990s. When Volker and I started to work on three-dimensional morphal models in the mid-90s, some significant concepts for 2D face modeling have been already introduced. The usage of example faces for building linear face models within a principal component analysis was introduced by Surovich and Kirby in 1987 and later heavily pushed by Turk and Pentland. At the same time, Craw and Cameron argued that the variability of human face shape should be modeled separately from the texture. Also in 1991, Joy et al. proposed that 3D models, as they are used in computer graphics, should be used for representing face shape. But it took another few years before a first automated algorithm for fitting a linear 2D image model to a face image was proposed by Lanitis, Taylor and Kutz. In their seminal work, the face shape was represented by roughly 100 to 200 landmark and contour points. At the same time, in Tommy Pocho's lab, dense correspondence was computed by using optic flow-like algorithms. In 1997, Michael Jones used the stochastic gradient descent algorithm for fitting a two-dimensional morphal model densely to a target image. However, all these 2D image models could not really perform a separation of parameters such as face shape and face pose or extract illumination parameter as it was motivated by Peter Hellinen in 1994 in David Mumford's group. With these results ready, the time was ripe that someone performed the step to build a three-dimensional morphal model for faces. The most important step towards a three-dimensional morphal model is having access to 3D example faces. In the 80s, a company named Cyberware produced a laser scanner that could record 3D images of faces within 15 seconds by moving the scanner head around a person's head. 
in 93, in Weiss foresight, Heinrich Bildhoff, here a picture of him sitting in the scanner, bought such a scanner to perform standardized experiments on human face perception. He built a database of 100 male and 100 female 3D scans of excellent quality. Controlling for facial expressions, accessoires and the hair, and most important, the illumination conditions, is even today a major challenge. And I guess that is one of the reasons why this type of data are still not available on large scale. Besides the quality, the database offered as a second very important advantage to succeed of building a three-dimensional morphable model. The scanner delivers texture and geometry in cylindrical coordinates. Despite of some shortcomings with occlusions in the chin and nose region, this representation was of a tremendous advantage for us. The geometry and reflections in cylindrical coordinates we directly interpreted as a kind of 2D image. Therefore, it was easy to transfer all the 2D image processing methods mentioned earlier onto 3D surfaces. We computed the correspondence between two scans by using an optic flow algorithm from Bergen and Hingorani from 1990, or from merging different facial parts, we applied the Laplacian pyramid approach of Bird and Adelson from 83. Instead of directly computing on the 3D mesh, Performing the computation on a parametric surface representation sees currently a strong revival in the neural network literature for face modeling. Whilst those results from the late 90s are still pretty impressive today, in the last 20 years a whole research field arose around 3D morphing models. The work we present here is a survey paper. We aimed at an in-depth review of all important milestones in the area. We would like to highlight that this survey paper was a joint effort of all 13 co-authors, as you can see here. We want to give you an overview and will focus on a few highlights today. The highlights we show in this presentation are biased towards our co-authors. Our survey, however, offers a broader view on the literature. Each one of us contributed to the chapters we are most familiar with, and we hope that you enjoy reading and browsing through the resulting paper. We would also like to apologize for references we might have missed. In the following, we will let us guide by the structure of the paper and go by the main challenges in the field of 3D morphing models. A 3D morphing model is built from 3D captures of faces. You have already seen the scanner that was used to build the first morphing model. Over the years, simple 3D capture setups became more affordable. At the same time, high-end setups became faster and more complex, like the light stage you can see on the right. High frame rate scanning setups enable dynamic capture, and light stage setups enable us to capture accurate surface reflection properties. Whilst collecting high quality data to build 3D morphing models is expensive, in the last decade more and more datasets are shared across the community. We include an overview over the publicly available datasets in our survey and maintain an up-to-date list on GitHub where you can contribute. There are, however, remaining challenges in the capture of 3D faces. Current setups are expensive and scans are performed under controlled lab conditions. Natural expressions are very hard to capture. And besides technical challenges, there are also ethical challenges with dataset bias and privacy. Whilst the classical model was built using PCA and based on a cylindrical representation, there were several improvements over the years. The community found that not only facial identity can be modeled, but also added facial expression to the generative model. In recent years, more and more 3D morphing models became publicly available, like the models you can see here. And this enables the community to explore different modeling strategies and models. There is, however, still a big gap between what we can capture and what we can model. Especially regions like the eyes, mouth and hair need special focus and are challenging to model in a parametric way. In addition, shape and identity latent spaces are usually not interpretable. This was already the case with PCA models and did not improve with nonlinear models. Finally, not only the dataset, but also 
the modeling choices can lead to bias in downstream applications. To render an image from a 3D morphing model instance, usually a pinhole camera and a simple illumination model based on a point light source or sphere harmonics is deployed. Already the original paper used a differentiable renderer, and today's differentiable renderers enable end-to-end -end learning across datasets. Whilst differentiable ray tracers are available, they are so far not dominant in combination with 3D morphing models. At last year's CVPR, several works explored the separation of diffuse and specular albedo, like the one you see on the right, to enable more complex and more realistic illumination simulation. A recent focus on the rendering side is towards animation and including neural post-processing or neural rendering. Current limitations on the image formation side are for example simplistic camera models, mainly because each extension makes model adaptation more complex. Whilst we have dif differentiable renderers, rasterization for example is only differentiable with a soft rasterizer and doesn't always lead to useful gradients. On top of the realism gap introduced by capture and modeling, the rendering contributes to the realism gap between mo morphin model renderings and real-world images and videos. As shown before, a key application of 3D morphin models is as a prior in an analysis by synthesis setting, where we aim to reconstruct the 3D face from a 2D image or video. In the original SIGGRAPH 99 paper, stochastic gradient descent was used. Today, this is still the dominant optimization technique, but it is used in several different settings. Some methods aim at the parameter estimation via a decoder, and others combine this idea with a differentiable render to accurately reconstruct the image. The main advantage is that this task is now not solved for each image independently, but the network can be trained on multiple images and lead to faster and more robust analysis by synthesis. The inverse rendering problem is at test time not necessarily solved by an optimization, but the inverse function is approximated via a neural network. Another key change over the years was to optimize not only the pixel error, but to add more complex loss terms. Whilst edge-based features were added quickly, in the last years we have seen that several more loss functions lead to more stable optimization, as well as more accurate and robust reconstruction for example high-level features like perceptual losses. In recent years, more and more authors started to share their code, which makes the different strategies more comparable and enable an easier start with 3D morph models. We include a table of frameworks with shared code in our survey. The Now Challenge serves as a first benchmark that provides 3D ground truths for in-the-wild images. You can see some examples on the right. The current best method in this challenge, called DECA, is also presented at this year's SIGGRAPH, and you can see their reconstruction results here. It remains a challenge to evaluate full inverse rendering beyond shape reconstruction, as we lack ground truths in real-world settings. The 3D from 2D estimation is an ill-posed problem, and some ambiguities can't be resolved with current modeling priors. Also, several faces in a scene are currently inferred independently. The interaction between people is not taken into account yet. Recent developments in machine learning led to several important contributions in all components of 3D morphing models. On the modeling side, the linear PCA model is very limiting and is today mostly replaced by nonlinear models. For texture, generative adversarial networks are deployed and also for shape modeling, nonlinear models became popular and are much more expressive, especially when modeling facial expressions like the one on the right. We have also recently seen joint models of faces in motion and speech. The dramatic speedup in inverse rendering setting also enables for the first time to improve or learn models from 2D images, like the learned model you can see on the right. In addition, implicit models like the one you see here arose and those drop some key modeling assumptions of 3D morphing models like strict correspondence. However, most advances through deep learning lead to novel challenges, for example, of overfitting to a distribution of faces. Model complexity comes at a cost. The models derived from 2D data solely also did not yet reach the same quality as models derived from 3D scans. We would hope to reduce the need for expensive 3D data and learn models that can go beyond what we currently reach with high-quality 3D scans. 
3D morph models have been widely applied in various different settings. The most prominent one might be the entertainment industry, where facial reenactment not only relies on most recent deep learning methods, but also strong 3D modeling. Especially in the early years, morph models became popular for face recognition. In forensic applications, 3D morph models were applied for face reconstruction from dry skull, virtual aging, as well as for the generation of police sketches. In medical applications, 3D morph models of faces and statistical shape models are applied for facial reconstruction as well as the early diagnosis of disorders like the fetal alcohol syndrome. Morphine models were also applied to study the human brain, revealing several interesting properties of human visual perception and how it relates to a simple face space spanned by a linear face model. Besides the individual directions and applications of 3D morphine models, we also provide our bigger picture view on the state of 3D morphine models. There are some key challenges that are very hard to overcome and are currently limiting the applicability. A key challenge is to find a low dimensional representation which is suitable for an inverse rendering setting that can still high handle a higher degree of detail or even a flexible degree of detail. Another challenge is how hard it is to compare different modeling techniques or inverse rendering approaches. There is a lack of benchmarks the community agrees on and most comparison publications are done ad hoc. When thinking beyond faces, it is unclear how such an analysis by synthesis method can scale. It is already challenging, for example, to include hair or even other objects in the scene. Both on the modeling side, but also on the computer vision side, there are ethical challenges with privacy and dataset bias that we can hopefully reduce with technical solutions. We recently also have seen issues with regards of potential misuse of techniques based on 3D morphine models, especially in photorealistic video editing. We ended our survey by our prediction of the future. We were wondering in what direction the field will move and how we will model faces in 10 or 20 years. Some of the limitations today are caused by modeling assumptions that are rarely challenged. A key challenge in current morph model building is a large amount of manual interaction or tuning. We are currently seeing a shift towards learned model. Will we be able to keep disentangled and interpretable representations? What will be the representation? How will we handle details? Will we be able to have one model to cover all various use cases? Or will the divergence of models we um, observe today continue? We currently see strong trends in the computer graphics and vision community towards 3D modeling, implicit representation, and also inverse rendering. And we are convinced that some ideas behind 3D morph models will contribute to this shift. This survey paper was initiated at the Dachstuhl Seminar on 3D Morph Models in 2019. We would like to thank all participants that contributed to this work with their valuable inputs and discussions. We hope you enjoyed this brief overview and we also hope that you will enjoy reading the survey paper. Together with the paper, we started a list of shared resources around 3D Morph Models, which we intend to keep up to date and we look forward to your contribution. If you are interested to hear about events or all kind of announcement in the community, please join our Google group.